Number 55. How many grams of lead 2 hydroxide PBOH2 will dissolve in 500 milliliters of a 0.050 molar PBCL2 solution? And then they give us the KSP of 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, 10 to the negative 15th. Okay. So we're asking for how many grams will dissolve. When we're dealing with KSP values, right, solubility product, we're talking about a compound that can either precipitate or dissolve, right? So in this case, since the question is asking for how many grams of PBOH2 will dissolve, this, the PBOH2, is the one that has the KSP value attached to it. We also know that this one is the uh, compound that has a KSP is because the other one, if we go by the solubility rules, which is like Gen Chem 1, right? If we go by those solubility rules, there are a couple of ions when combined with chlorine that will make this uh, not soluble. But however, lead is not one of them. So this is going to be aqueous. Okay. So now since we have a KSP value and we found out which compound out of the two is the one that has the KSP value, we have to write out the balanced equation. And remember, solubility products always start off with the, the compound as a solid, so PBOH2, and this will dissolve, disassociate, double arrow because we're talking about equilibrium, into its two ions. In this case, it's got to be the lead and then the hydroxide. OH is a polyatomic ion that never breaks apart. So it would be PB plus OH. There's a couple of ways to find out the states. You can use your subscripts, right? There was one lead. So if I crisscross that up, that tells me that the hydroxide is a negative one charge. And there was two hydroxides. I crisscrossed that up, telling me that the PB was a plus two. And now since they have charges, I'm going to just say that they're aqueous. And now let's just balance. I do see that I have two hydroxides, so I need to put a two in front of here. And now we are good for now. Now we want to find out how many grams of this will dissolve in 500 milliliters, which means that I somehow have to find out what is the molarity of this. Now, generally with a KSP, we will be able to find out a molar solubility because we can say this has a variable and what this is as a variable. However, just always make sure that you don't have a common ion. In this case, we are already in a solution, a 0.050 molarity PBCL2 solution. And the PBCL2, remember that's aqueous. So that will dissolve 100% into its two ions. And in this case, the two ions is going to be the PB and the CL. PB is a two plus, right, or plus two. And halide, when grouped with the metal, is always going to be a minus one. These are charges, so once again, they also are aqueous. And since it's dissolving 100% of the time, that means I could use my mole ratios to solve for what my concentrations are. I can't do that for these because this is not 100%. These come to equilibrium. So I have 0 0.050 molarity. And in this case, it's a one to one. Actually, is it a one to one to one? I did not balance it. There's two chlorines here. So that would have to be a two. And now it changes. There was one to two to one, if I actually just put the numbers in, right? One of these for every one of these and one and two of these. So since these numbers are the same, that means whatever you started with, you have to have the same amount. So this would be 0 0.050. And for the chlorine, you would just have two times the amount. So it'd be 0 0.050 times two. So whatever that is. Point, point, uh, 0 0.10, we'll say. 
But which one do we actually care about? Do we care about the lead concentration or the chloride? Well, we only care about common ions. Which ion is the same between both of them? Yeah, it's the lead, right? So whatever you have, that's your initial concentration. So since we were already in the solution, I started off with a 0.050 molarity solution of this. And now I'm just going to bring this down here because we don't really need this anymore. And now since we started with a initial concentration, you should always do an ice table because, you know, if, if we don't do the 5% rule and we assume accidentally, the math is going to be incorrect. So let's just do the ice real quick. Down and down. Oh, well, that was actually pretty good. Solids don't count, so therefore I don't care about this section right here. And we did not start with any hydroxide, so zero. But that means the change, remember, you could only go up from there. So this will be plus an X value, but you always have to go based off of what the coefficient is. So this would be plus 2X, and this would be just plus X. Combine them, this would be 0 0.050 plus X, and this would be 2x. And these are your two values that you're going to put in for your KSP. So I'm just going to move this over here for now. Remember, the general KSP formula is this, right? It's just equal to the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. So in this case, we have KSP equals concentration of the two ions. So I have PB. 2 plus, and OH minus. The KSP is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th. The PB2 plus is 0 0.050 plus X, and the OH is a 2X. Keep in mind that we do have to raise the OH to the second power because you got to watch out for those coefficients. Now we can try to assume Remember, since the KSP is so small, that means that this change is probably so small that from initial to equilibrium, you didn't really change much. And whatever you started with is probably going to be roughly the same as what you end with at equilibrium. So I can get rid of this plus X. At the end, we will do the 5% rule just to see if we did it correctly. And then we'll carry on. So here we go, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th equals, we have 0 0.050 times 2x squared. Well, let's work on the 2x squared first. Remember, that just means that you have two of the same multiplied by each other. So I have two 2x's multiplied by each other. Two times two is four, and then you picked up two x's, so that's x squared. So I can just get rid of this and say that this is the same as 4x squared. Now, let's just multiply 0 0.05 by 4. So I get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th equals 0 0.05 times 4. I get 0.2x squared. So we're going to divide on both sides by 0.2. Pretty simple so far. So 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th divided by 0.2. I get 6 times 10 to the negative 15th equals x squared. So I could just take the square root. Beautiful. And my x value is 7 point, let's say 7.7. Four, six, seven point seven four six times ten to the negative eighth, and that's molarity. Now we should just check for the five percent rule. Basically, we take this value and divide it by the initial. So the initial concentration was zero point zero five. Oh, what was going on there? Hold on a minute. Zero point zero five, and just times it by one hundred. This answer should be five or less. If it is, 
That means that we assumed correctly. So I'm just going to take this value divided by 0 0.05 times 100. And yeah, I don't even get 1%. So we're good. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Say that this passed the 5% rule. And I'm going to take this as my answer. Now, is this the answer to the question? Well, not really, because they said how many grams of the lead hydroxide, PbOH2. But here we have a molarity. So let's see. I have a molarity value, and I want to get to grams. Well, molarity usually goes to moles, right? Remember the formula. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. I have the molarity. Right, the molarity was just what I found, 7.746 times 10 to the negative eighth. And they told me that I'm in 500 mils. I can convert that into liters, right? Mils to liters, all we have to do is just divide by 1,000. So 500 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.500. 0 0.500, and that would go here. Then from there, I could find the moles. Remember, if we just rearrange this formula, moles equals molarity times liter. So I can just do that as well. So mole equals 7.746 times 10 to the negative eighth times 0 0.500. Let's see what I have. So 7.746 times 10 to the negative eighth times 0.5. I get 3.873 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now, this is moles of who? Well, keep in mind, we want it to be moles of PbOH2. Is that true? Well, remember, when we found out for x, right, this was technically a 1x, and even though the PbOH2 is not needed in our equilibrium, you still have an amount for it. This is your molar solubility. And there was only one of these, so it is it is like 1x. So this would be moles of PbOH2. Now, all we have to do is just get to grams. But I know how to go from moles to grams, right? If I want to go from moles to grams of PbOH2, all I have to do is just multiply by the molar mass. So I have to go on my periodic table and find out what is the mass of PbOH2. Well, let's see. Pb, 207.2 plus, I have two oxygens, 2 times 16 plus 2 times 1.008. So I get roughly 200 and 41.216. I'm going to take that and times it by 3.873 times 10 to the negative eighth. And that is basically going to be our answer if I can plug it in correctly. Let's see, 241.216 times 3.873 times 10 to the negative eighth. And I guess two sig figs, so 9.3. Nine. .3. Nine Point three times 10 to the negative sixth, and that's grams. And now we found our answer. So how many grams? 9.3 times 10 to the negative six grams. And we're done. Okay, what do you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all are having a great day. Let's keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.